Hello and welcome to the next tutorial about PrePowerMax. In this tutorial I will show you two ways to simulate interference fit, so press fit or shrink fit. Uh, let's create the first analysis because we, in this uh, tutorial we will make two analyses and we will use two different models, uh, so we will see two approaches. Let's uh, define plane stress with default unit system uh, and I will import the first model now. Uh, you can see that uh, this model is uh, pretty simple, it's very similar to mm, what we used in tutorial number 17, composite pipe. Uh, this, this time mm, the difference is mainly mm, such that uh, here we have a penetration or interference between those two parts. So if you mm, take a look at how it's modeled in FreeCAD, mm, you can see that we have a controlled, of course, uh, val number uh, amount of, of interference between those uh, two uh, parts. So let's go back to PrePomex. I will specify the mm, meshing parameters. Uh, so I have to change the maximum element size to one millimeter, and I can create the mesh. And now mm, you can see better the, the interference between those uh, two mm, parts. And uh, of course we want to resolve it uh, and calculate the stresses um, or actually mm, contact pressure caused by this uh, resolution of, of interference fit. Uh, so <coughs> let's define material and this will be standard material, mm, what we uh, om something that we all pretty much always use, so steel. Uh, and the standard properties, mm, I will just uh, define a section. Uh, section uh, is also uh, with default settings, uh, one millimeter, mm, and I can hide the mesh. Mm, and now I'll define a step. This will be static step with default settings, and uh, I have to define boundary conditions. Mm, I will use uh, symmetry. Mm, so mm, here we apply symmetry boundary condition, and also to mm, bottom side we also apply the boundary condition uh, to simulate symmetry. All right, mm, we won't use any loads here, so mm, just the mm, boundary conditions. Uh, and uh, we will use contact to mm, resolve this um, interference. Uh, so let's define surface interaction, mm, surface behavior, default uh, hard behavior, and uh, let's search for, uh, for contact pairs. Mm, use this automatic tool, and uh, I will just change the distance uh, tolerance for, for search and uh, now we can see that it found also some additional pair that we don't need so we can select it and uh, uh, press delete and it will be removed and now mm, let's just zoom in and swap the master and slave assignment uh, so now i have a contact pair mm, now just make sure that uh, adjustment th this adjust is set to no uh, because this adjustment is train free uh, and what we need here is mm, resolution of interference fit with generation of stresses and strains so not uh, what adjustment offers us adjustment will resolve this but without generating any stresses and strains and now mm, let's uh, just add, add uh, field output for contact pressure mm, and other variables related to contact. Uh, and uh, that's uh, pretty much it. And uh, I can submit uh, the analysis now. Results are already available, so let's check them. Of course, this, this is exaggerated, so mm, just let's um, set this to true scale. Mm, and uh, we are interested in contact pressure. Mm, so basically what we have in, in this tab this is contact pressure, mm, and uh, if you look at the value, you can compare it with, of course, with analytical solution. Uh, here, I just I just have a picture with exaggerated um, interference to, to show you the dimensions of this part. Mm, and here's the formula from Shidley's mechanical engineering design, and we have the analytical value of, of the contact pressure that we expect. Uh, and uh, if we compare this uh, with the value obtained in the analysis, you can see that the agreement is uh, really good. Uh, so mm, we can conclude that uh, this method of resolving interference fits in Calculix works as expected. And now <coughs> we'll proceed to the second approach. Mm, the second approach um, is the classic one or the old one, uh, where we use thermal expansion to resolve to mm, calculate uh, interference fit uh, problem. Mm, and uh, that was used mainly in the past when uh, such features like um, automatic resolution of interference fit in contact were not available. Uh, and then mm, it was done using uh, thermal expansion. So we'll see how it can be done also in Prepomax and we compare the uh, results. So let's create a new model. This will be again 2D plane stress with the following system. I will import the geometry mm, and this time I will use another, I will use another model. Uh, but you, will see, you can see that this is pretty much the same model. Uh, however, mm, this time instead of uh, interference or penetration between those two parts, we have a gap. And uh, the size of this gap is uh, the same as the size of this uh, interference. Uh, so that's uh, how it was, was uh, modeled here and we will see uh, how this approach works. 
so basically in the, the same model but with, with a gap instead of uh, penetration between those two parts. Uh, so now mm, let's uh, generate the mesh. Uh, I will specify the same uh, meshing parameters and I will create the mesh. Uh, the mesh is hidden but we can also of course uh, see it and you, you can see the gap here. And now let's define the material and uh, this will be mm, the same material uh, so let's specify the, the properties uh, but this time uh, we also have to define a thermal uh, expansion and here you can see the value that we will use for the thermal expansion coefficient. Uh, so let's define it here and uh, when it comes to zero temperature uh, it's zero uh, degrees Celsius so uh, I will change this. And now I have to define a section. Mm, this will be again plain stress section with default uh, unit thickness. And uh, now mm, let's define a step. Uh, this will be static step with default settings. Uh, boundary conditions, of course, uh, will be the same. So mm, I will select uh, those two edges here uh, for symmetry and also uh, the two edges uh, here for uh, symmetry in y direction. Uh, so now we have boundary conditions defined. Uh, again, we won't uh, define any loads, but this time we'll define fields of uh, temperature to uh, cause um, expansion of, of, uh, of this inter inside part. Uh, so mm, before, before doing that, uh, let's define contact again. Uh, we have to create uh, surface interaction, so again the same behavior, and search for contact pairs uh, with the same settings. And this time it found only uh, one pair. Mm, we can also swap the uh, master and slave assignment and confirm this. Uh, of course, we, also we want to make sure that adjustment is disabled. Mm, and now mm, what we also have to do in this case uh, is to apply uh, initial conditions, so initial temperature. Uh, I will select um, both parts and uh, this will be zero uh, degrees Celsius, this is the value of initial temperature. Uh, and uh, now I have to, mm, let, let's maybe uh, define field outputs uh, so we don't forget about this. And uh, one more thing, uh, I will define, uh, use the defined field, something that we used in one of the previous tutorials. And uh, I will apply this to mm, the in in inner uh, part. And the value mm, is uh, what we calculated here using this uh, simple formula. Uh, this approach is described in Building Better Products with uh, Finite Element Analysis uh, by Vince Adams. A uh, very good uh, book about practical aspects of, of FEA. Uh, so this is the mm, value that we calculated. Uh, assuming that uh, the expansion uh, of the diameter or mm, change in the diameter uh, is uh, actually uh, what we want, what we would need to close the gap, uh, plus what we would need to uh, obtain the uh, interference. Uh, so mm, that's that's how you calculate it. Uh, that's how you calculate this. And um, here we have the value of temperature that you want to uh, prescribe. Mm, so let's uh, specify this exact uh, value of of the temperature, uh, and we will see uh, how this approach uh, works in comparison with, with the previous one. Uh, so temperature is applied. Uh, and I can submit the analysis now and you should see results soon. The results are uh, already available, so let's check them. Uh, I can show the stresses, of course, and uh, we are mainly interested in uh, C-press, uh, so contact pressure. And now, mm, if we compare this again with this formula here, uh, we can see that the agreement is very good. In fact, it's a bit better than in the previous approach. Uh, so that's uh, also what we expect, mm, and uh, this uh, confirms that both approaches are fine. And the, the first one may, may need some mm, adjustment, but uh, uh, both provide correct results and um, uh, we also um, proved that the new approach or the one that we use in most FEA software with um, default resolution of interference wi within uh, contact settings uh, is uh, in calculus also works as expected even though uh, in the documentation currently is, is not um, very well explained and uh, one could wonder if it actually works like in Abacus for example uh, but you can see that mm, this uh, previous approach also is uh, fine for, for the resolution of interference feed uh, however in, if in doubt you can always compare this with analytical solution or with the traditional approach uh, and you can always use the traditional approach with thermal expansion in any software that supports uh, basically thermal expansion without and contact without the need for uh, automatic resolution of interference feed. Uh, so mm, that's it for this tutorial. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, as always, feel free to ask any questions and suggest topics of future tutorials in the comments. Have a nice day and uh, see you in the next video.